So good evening, everyone. Everyone, <laughs> thanks so much for being here tonight. I uh, do really appreciate it. I know when we start getting into the summer, um, it gets um, well. You got to kind of pick and choose your summer nights, and um, I always appreciate anyone that shows up um, to listen to what I have to say. And hopefully, I can um, give you some information that might help you with your trading. So tonight I um, wanted to talk about improving your win-loss ratio in trading and um, you know one of the things that um, comes up a lot when I work with people in coaching, I, I do quite a little bit of coaching individually and I'll ask people you know commonly about what their win-loss ratio is and it's it's really common for them to say, well, I win about as many trades as I lose. Um, Win-loss ratio is about 50-50. And so I start talking about the importance of focusing on your win-loss ratio. And um, it's, it's something that I see a lot of that folks don't even know exactly where to start to um, really begin improving that. So, um, Let's dig in on that. Hey, Mara. Hope all is well with you. Good to see you. So when we stock, start talking about our trading, um, we as traders, we're like anybody else. We tend to fall into particular habits. Habits like, um, well, this indicator, I have to have this indicator or I can't trade. We don't know why, but we have to have this indicator um, um, or I, I can't trade. Um, we, um, we trade in a certain style. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I've got to, I've got to trade fast because, you know, that's, that's where the money is. Um, but that's not being proven out in your account. And we tend to get into these, these habits and we don't actually ask the questions or the right questions often to determine whether or not that really is um, the situation that's happening. You know, I have actually had people pay me for coaching. And then when we get going in coaching, what they really want me to do is they want me to to tell them that they don't have to change anything about their trading, but somehow I can magically make what they're doing, what they want to do, profitable. And, you know, this, this slide, you know, if we do the same old things over and over, if we continue to repeat the same things over and over, it's it's impossible <laughs> um, to get different results. Um, you know, we will often go through a period in the market where we can break, um, we can have tons of bad habits, we can do all kinds of things, and that we know we shouldn't do. In fact, we would never recommend it to our son or our daughter or grandkids. We wouldn't recommend that they do that. But yet we do it over and over and over um, because, well, we're kind of stuck. We're, we're stuck in a habit that we're not even investigating to find out whether that's a habit that's making money for us or losing money for us. Most of us just look at our account and say, well, doggone it, I'm just not, I'm not happy with my results. I need better results. And so we start going out looking for something to give us better results in our trading. But, you know, don't, don't make me change anything. In fact, don't make me look at my past results 
to figure out what's going on, what's wrong. Um, I was pretty famous um, in my own mind um, early on in my trading career because I had attained a lot of knowledge in trading. I knew a lot of things. I could write my own code and all kinds of things for scans and, and all of that. But when it came right down to it, I wasn't making any money because I was right there where most people were. I, I would run about 50-50 trades. I, I would have periods where I would feel like I was brilliant. That, um, oh my gosh, I'm a genius in the market. Everything, everything I touch turns into money here um, in the market. So I've got this now. Finally, I've, I've got this. And then what I learned is I was mistaking a very strong bull market for genius. Anybody ever done that? Like wonder why all of a sudden things that were working so good before are suddenly not working and you're you're getting these drawdowns in the market. Well, for me what I started doing is I started focusing in on the things that I could quantify. And and what I mean by that is what was a trade that gave me good odds? And could I prove by looking at my trading results that what I believe to be true was actually true? Okay, that I needed this indicator or I couldn't trade. Well, when I started testing some of those indicators against my trading, I, I had a belief that I needed those indicators. Turns out I didn't. That it the indicator was not doing anything for me that I couldn't do myself. That I couldn't see in price action. And so I, I, I continued that process. I went on going through what were the things that were causing me problems in my trading? Where were my strengths and my weaknesses? And this is a question, if anyone's ever taken coaching with me here, everyone hears this question for, from me. What do you think is your strength as a trader? What do you think is your weakness as a trader? Because this was a process I went through to improve my win-loss ratio because I, I realized that, you know, and obviously I'm not the smartest guy out there because it took me a long time to figure out, you know, you can trade a lot, but if your win-loss ratio isn't any better than 50-50, guess what's going to happen? You're just going to create a whole lot more commissions for the broker, and they love you for it. They will love you for it. But overall, your account doesn't grow because there's too many drawdowns. You're taking too many losses in the trading and, and you're not trying to figure out what's creating those drawdowns. Yeah, I agree, Malcolm. Price, price is the key. But we all have different strengths and weaknesses in our trading. Um, for example, there's a lot of a lot of folks that believe that they should be going faster in their trading because, well, it's not working here. Or they traded stocks and, well, it's not working in stocks, so it must be options. So options is going to solve my problem. Um, anybody ever gone through that process and find out that that didn't solve the problem? I mean, I can raise both my hands on both those accords that that didn't solve my problem because I was still carrying forward the same weaknesses in my trading and I was doing nothing to fix those weaknesses. You see, if, if you can't make money trading stocks, you will not make money trading options. This won't happen. As a matter of fact, what will happen is you'll lose your money faster because options carry a lot more risk. 
if you're not making money in options or you're not making money on daily charts, going to an intraday chart isn't going to solve your problem. Your win-loss ratio isn't going to change because you're not fixing the, the things in your trading that's causing you an issue. You have a weakness there that you're not recognizing and you're repeating it over and over and over. I've used um, this uh, many times before and you guys may have, have heard it if you've listened to me talk before, but I was, ver I was, I, I would repeatedly see a stock that was moving in a trend, okay? Stock moving up in a trend. It would pull back, okay? But I was so uncomfortable in my trading. I, I was so um, weak in my rules and my guidelines and things like that in my trading. I would wait for so much confirmation that this is actually, oh, this is, okay, now, now I can buy it. This thing is really looking good. Only to buy it right at the point where it was going to pull back again. I, I used to say all the time, um, one of the things that I, I almost, well, not almost, I kind of had a complex because I, I, I was confident somebody had to be watching me and they were just here to punish me. Yep, Campbell's trading again. Let's take some of his money away. Because I would pull the trigger on the trade and be surprised every time. Now, wait a minute. Why is it immediately pulling back? Don't they know this is a good stock? It was still a good stock. I was buying it at the wrong time. I wasn't fixing my problems. I wasn't recognizing a repetitive mistake that I did over and over and over that prevented me from having a strong win-loss ratio. I was taking too many drawdowns trying to be too fast or too active of a trader just because, man, I got to trade today. I'm here. I got to do something. I got to trade today. And I would add to another drawdown in the market. So how do you fix some of these things? Well, one of the first things that you need to do um, is you need to go back and look at your past trades. Now, I know this is hard for a lot of people because a lot of people don't record their past trades. And certainly after they get through a trade, they're not going to look at it anymore. They're, that, that's, that's over. I don't have time for that. <clears throat> um, my mentor that started me in trading um, that I learned from told me from the first weekend class that I took that it was imperative for me to record my trades and review the results, study the results. I didn't do it. You know, I was so frustrated that I, I paid her for another um, live coaching session back then you had to drive to you know their place and sit down with them and because it wasn't online and I sat down and, and she said well let's go over your past trades and I said well I traded this one where did you enter and I said well somewhere around here okay where'd you exit I said well somewhere around here and we did that on multiple trades, multiple trades, until she looked at me and she said, Doug, I didn't think you were stupid. She went on to tell me that I've told you from the beginning, you need to know where your entry is. You need to know where your exit is. You need to know this information so that you can go back and review to find out what's working and what's not. Because just, be, just because I want to trade it doesn't mean that it's a good trade. And just because I want to trade it or I lose money on it doesn't mean somebody can't make money on it. It just wasn't my trade. 
might have been somebody else's trade it wasn't my trade and I finally woke up and I went back and I started questioning everything everything that I thought was important everything that I um, thought was a necessity things that I needed to do in my trading and I went back and I reviewed my trades I would write everything down I would study it in fact I kind of went too far to the other side then I, I documented everything but in that process I learned I could see it over and over and over the same thing was happening the stock would be trending because I'm a trend trader. I want to trade with the direction of the trend. The stock was trending. The stock would move up and pull back, and I would invariably buy it here. I would, and, and, and if there was resistance over here, I never even saw it. Big resistance over there to the left. Didn't even see it because I wasn't looking. You know, guys, studying this that revelation right there that I was repeating this same mistake over and over and over when I corrected this took me from a 50 50 winning trader to a 60 40 winning trader sometimes a little bit better than that fixing one mistake one mistake that I was repeating over and over and over. And so what I started doing is looking into all of my trades and looking at the trades that were giving me better odds of wins. Okay? Trade patterns that would improve my winning odds. I learned specifically that if I traded with the trend, if the trend was up, I had to trade with the trend up. No matter what I thought about the stock, no matter what I thought I knew, I had to trade with the trend up. That improved my win-loss ratio by a tiny little bit. I knew that I had to start changing my thinking on the trend if the trend was the trend I had to believe that the trend would continue until the trend break broke breaks okay because I don't know where the top of a trend is and I can't tell you when a trend bottoms out I know that I can't predict it and I learned that by studying my past trades I can't predict it I don't know all I could do was wait for the price to change Okay, when the price changed, showed me the upside trend, proved to me the upside trend. What I mean by that is that catch that pullback and right in here, buyers would step up and show me that they were ready to buy this again. Then I bought. And not until that buy signal occurred. Not until. Because another thing I found is once I started doing the right thing and buying stocks at or near price support, that's one of my rules. I buy stocks at or near price support in a trend. I noticed that I was losing enough of these trades because I was trying to predict the bounce. Anybody ever take a trade like that and predict it's going to turn and go to the upside and all of a sudden that thing popped up maybe just a little bit and then completely reverses well you just happened to buy right when the trend broke right you were trying to anticipate the entry of the trade the buy signal hadn't shown up and you happened to catch right when the trend broke. I stopped doing that, stopped predicting the entry. My win-loss ratio went up. Just a little tiny bit. 
I became more focused into the trade patterns and the trade setups that I that I repeated a lot of times in my trading. I even went so far as recording the days of the week. I found out in my stats that if I buy stocks on Friday, my win-loss ratio declines a little tiny bit. If I make Friday a profit day, where I take money off the, when I can, take money out of the market on Friday, my win-loss ratio improves a little bit. Is this making some sense, guys? By looking at my past results <clears throat> and studying my past results, I could make an improvements and I could see noticeable improvements by correcting that problem. Okay. <clears throat> I found trades that I took that I thought for a long time, I was just sure a particular trade was a great trade for me until I started recording the trades and found out that no, that trade loses half the time. So I started getting very, very stringent on my trading. I started eliminating trade patterns and trade setups that didn't produce returns of better than 50-50. Okay. So when I look at a strategy, if I would look back at my my data and my my spreadsheets and all the stuff I collected, I found out that this trade doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter how good a trader I am. I win half the time, I lose half the time on that trade. I no longer want to trade it. I mean, think about it, guys. How many wants to go into any business decision with a coin flip 50-50? Anybody want to do that? We want to have better odds, right, for our trading. And if we don't look at our win-loss ratio, if we don't look at improving our win-loss ratio, how are you ever going to make more money in the market? What's going to make the difference between your 50-50 win-loss ratio if you don't figure out what's going wrong and fix it? Is this making sense, guys? <clears throat> we have to find out. And, you know, here's the thing. Um, Gwen may have a different hang-up or a different issue with money than I have. I can show a path of how to fix that, but if Gwen doesn't make the decision to create a rule to prevent herself and have the discipline to maintain that rule, it doesn't change. Okay. So we have to individually find out what those problems are. And here's the thing, I'll, I'll tell you this right now, guys. It doesn't matter. You guys know that I teach the 3 8 trap. I love the 3 8 trap. I just, that is my thing. That's basically all I do. All right? But I can tell you this, if you don't follow the rules of the 3 8 trap, you'll be a 50-50 win-loss trader. Okay. If you don't follow the rules or find out what's a winning strategy or a winning setup for you or winning trade setup and you don't find out which ones are causing you the losses, guess what? You can trade faster, won't matter. You're just going to have more drawdowns. We're still going to be 50-50 one loss trader until you figure out those things that are causing you trouble. 
you know, Rick and I are a lot alike in a lot of different ways, and we're way different in a lot of different ways. Okay? Rick knows this, and I know this if I stopped at Rick's door. If I ran over to, and knocked on Rick's door and said, Rick, you're out of your ever-loving mind unless you trade this trade. Rick's going to go look at the chart, and he's going to decide, hmm, good luck with that, but that's not me. I'm not trading that. Because Rick is different than me in how he trades. Doesn't mean that we both can't be successful in trading. Rick knows what's his trade. I know what my, what's my trade. And I've made mention of this many times before. You know, Warren Buffett lives here in Nebraska. He just calls me Doug. But when he knocks... <laughs> When he knocks on my door and says, Campbell, dude, you got to trade this. And I go look at it and I say, hey, buddy, you know, I'm sorry, but that's not my trade. Okay. Think about, think about the things that are causing you trouble in your trading. Maybe it's simple things like efficiency, focus. I find people that are trying to trade and they're watching Netflix all day long. Now, what makes you think that you can do that and still focus effectively in your trading? At least focus for a little while until you put that trade together before you turn your attention back to Netflix. Okay, remember the market is made up of winners and losers every day. Okay, you cannot beat the odds in trading when you've got 80% of the money out there in the market is controlled by the institutions. And trust me, they are the best of people that can trade. They are very, they're whip smart when it comes to the market. They know their stuff. And if you come to the market with, you know, well, maybe, or yeah, you know, whatever, or you come to, they're just going to take your money. That's what they're there to do. They're going to take your money. So by re re reviewing your past per trades, you have to look in the mirror and you've got to have that tough conversation with yourself. You know, it's funny being in this business because it's interesting to me. People will, they'll blame everybody but themselves. And I was the same way. Believe me, I was the same. Well, th this if the president would have been on, th I would have made money on this trade. The president came on, no, the stupid Fed members, don't they know? I blame it on everybody but me. Okay. I changed drastically in that regard because I want the responsibility. I want the responsibility. I want to make this decision and I want to make the best decision I can before I pull the trigger on that trade. I want the responsibility because it's on me. It's my fault if it goes wrong. I'm the only one that can prevent those mistakes from happening. It's my fault if I don't follow through. Okay. So, you know, people will try to convince me sometimes and people in, in the room and I don't blame them. They, this might be their trade, but they'll, isn't this a great trade? Isn't this, a, you know, isn't, um, you know, good luck. But I wouldn't trade that with somebody else's money. Okay, it's not my trade. I'm not going to get involved in that. I'm not going to get involved in the hype. I'm not going to get involved in all of the... The, the goofiness out there in the market, the, the chasing, the racing, the doing all of those. Oh my gosh, I'm missing out. No, 
I don't care who says this is a good stock. I don't care who tells me how many analysts are supporting it. It doesn't matter to me. If I look at that chart and it's not my trade, it's not my trade. I'm not going to trade it. Okay. So do more of what works and less of what doesn't. It sounds so simple to say, but if you haven't gone back and done this, you know, kind of audit of your trading, you don't know what works. You have ideas about what should work. You have thoughts about, well, this has to work because so many people say it works. But have you actually proved that that works? Can you see that that works in the results that you're trading? Okay. That's where you're going to find an improvement in your win-loss ratio. And trust me, guys, once you start doing this work, okay, once you start doing that investigation in your trading, you're going to learn so much about yourself. And you're going to find the same kind of things that, that I've found over the years that all of the, all of the losses, I, I shouldn't say all the losses. There's a, there's a surprise event that comes up. Okay. Boom. Takes you, you get hit. It's a loss. But once again, I look at that and say, now, wait a minute. I should have known that was coming. Okay. I put my money out there at risk. I didn't do my due diligence to know that that earnings event was happening. I put my money out there at risk and I didn't know Jerome Powell was speaking today. That's on me. Okay. So certainly there are those events that come up that kind of trick us and catch us but there's things you know like North Korea fires off a nuke okay nobody knew that was coming there's no way anybody could see that was coming well I can't really blame that on me but from now on I'm going to be paying attention to what's happening over in North Korea and when he starts kicking up his heels I'm going to be paying attention to that because I'm not going to let that little funny haired, haircutted guy over there take money away from me. I want the responsibility in my trading. Okay. So I find a lot of people are trading in a method that um, they think this is what they should do because they hear of... Um, well, that's the right thing from one place or another that um, this is the right thing to do. But you might um, find that it really doesn't fit your lifestyle. I thought for a long time I, I was a day. I'm going to be a day trader. Day trader is where it's at. You got to be a day trader. Yeah, I'm a I'm a day trader. You know, somebody ask you, what do you do? <laughs> hey, I day trade. You know, hey. It didn't get any cooler than that. I'm a day trader. I did it for four years full time, and I absolutely hated my life. I mean hated it. I hated it. Every day was filled with stress. Every day was, oh my gosh, I'm battling the market here today. You know, um, my wife would say something, shut up. Don't talk to me. I'm in a trade. I didn't want to be that guy. I hated it. So I had to make a change. I had to realize that, oh, wait a minute. Okay, I can do this and I can make money at it, but it's no fun. I don't want to do it. I don't like doing it. Getting up every day was, ugh. hated it 
So I went back and made some changes to my trading. Okay, I found out that that wasn't for me. So what's for me? And I find a lot of people that I work with in coaching are trading a style of trading that they think fits them. But when you ask them about the lifestyle that they really want, they want to be an active trader, but you know, I don't want to work very much. I don't want to be in front of my screens all the time. I want to spend time with my grandkids. I want to do this. I want to do that. They're, you're not fitting into the mold, okay? You're trying to be something that you're not. And you'll never be happy and you'll never be comfortable if you're trading in a strategy that doesn't fit you. So you need to find out those things. You need to find out what's your strategy. Where's the worst, what feels right? I've been telling people that as I get older and older and older, you guys know that I, for a long, long time, has, have had my money divided between what I use for what I consider higher risk trading, swing trading, um, options trading, things like that, and then the majority of my money nowadays is over in what I call position trading, longer term positions. And the older I get, then what I know is going to happen is I will fully transition into the, to the position trader because I've only got so many days left. And there's a list of things I want to do. And I can't do what I'm doing right now and get those things done. So I have to change my trading to my lifestyle that I want. And I've helped a lot of people in coaching change that lifestyle, or not change the lifestyle, but change their trading to their lifestyle, and they've never looked back. They found their niche. This is it. I, I love this. I'm having fun doing this, and I have the time I want to trade, to do what I want to do. So we all have to find our strategy. You guys know in the swing trading thing, you know, it's three a trap for me. I tell people I do two things in the market, and this is no joke. Stock's trending up, it pulls back, finds support and trend, buyers step up, that's a buy. Okay, I tell people if the three goes below the eight, we've lost too much momentum in the trade, that's a 50-50 trade. I can tell you by fact, by looking at my stats and showing you that when the three crosses above the eight, it is not a trade until it proves that it can hold it as support. I call it the crossover. The crossover up fails 50% of the time. I know that. For me, it's not a trade may be different for you. I know that if I wait for this pattern, three stays above the eight, that the buy signal shows up here, this trade, even though I have to be patient to wait for this trade, this trade wins 70% of the time or better. And that's important to me because I want to main a high win-loss ratio. If I trade 50-50 trades, I'm going to have 50-50 win-loss ratio. I only want to trade trades that I can prove from my trading make higher probability wins. Is that making sense, guys? I mean, it, um, because... This is a concept that is so important because we come to trading oftentimes and the market opens and all we can do is think about, I got to find a trade, I got to find a trade, I got to find a trade. That's fine to think that way as long as you're thinking, I got to find the right trade. Not any trade, the right trade. If no right trade shows up, I'm not trading. Because I'm not here to just be busy. I'm here to make money. I'm here to trade with the direction of the market when the odds are in my favor. If the odds are not in my favor, I'd rather just keep my hard-earned money right where it is. 
okay? Because as sure as the world, I make that knee-jerk reaction into a trade. If I break those rules, I commonly get punished. I get a drawdown. Now I have to find a trade to make that up before I can ever make money. I've got to make that back before I can ever make money. So I only want to look for trades that give me that higher probability in a position. And then you have to develop the discipline to follow rules. I don't know anybody that finds this easy. <laughs> I wish I could say it's, it's so easy to follow rules, but it's not. So when you start reviewing and, and going through your trades, that's really a never ending process. Okay, because when you go back and you look, oh, this trade law, and by the way, I always review my losing trades first. Okay, and I go back and I look and I say, did I do this trade right? Oftentimes, when I learned that this trade just wins 50% of the time, on the trade, I did it right, but it's still lost. Well, over a period of time, you build up enough data on it and you go, what's the point of even doing this trade? What's the point of trading this pattern? It doesn't win enough. Stop doing it. Guess what happens? Win-loss ratio goes up. you start making more money because you're not having to make up the down drawdowns in the money by following the rules. And we learn, at least I do, I'm hard headed. I, it seemed like I can't learn anything um, very well unless I sufficiently beat myself up over and over and over about a million times. If I beat myself up plenty of times and finally it gets really sore, I learn something and I can fix it. Okay, stop doing that, right? Hit your thumb with a hammer. Keep doing it over and over and over. You're going to say pretty soon, you know what? I'm not going to do that anymore. Hit, hit my thumb with a hammer. So I created rules and guidelines for my trading. Anybody that's taken the 3 trap class knows that I have one of these on my desk every day, all week long. Every Sunday, I fill out a new one. Because it's a reminder to me of where my rules, my guidelines are. Okay, what I'm here to do. I'm not just here to be busy. I'm here to make money. So every week, every Sunday, as I'm preparing for the week ahead, What's my annual goal? What's my monthly goal? What's my weekly goal? Every week. You know, when I was running a construction business, I used to write a work order for everyone that went to work, you know, um, so that it was, it, everyone thought it was, a lot of people think, well, the only reason you do that is you're really, you know, you don't think people can think for themselves and they can't get the work, you know, th that kind of thing. But no, the work order was more for me as the business owner because I would have an expectation that they could complete this. And if they couldn't complete it over and over and over in this period of time, I need to find out why. And maybe it was just I was wrong. It just took longer to do things. And I had to change that estimation. Sometimes I had a problem out there with folks. They didn't know what they were doing and it was taking too long. My fault. I had to fix it. By doing this, it's like writing that work order for me every week. This is my job. This is what I'm here to do. I'm not here to trade to be busy. I'm here to trade to make money. Here's how I make money. And I follow through. Average trade size, risk tolerance per trade. 
I never trade trades beyond my risk tolerance for any trade. Don't care. Doesn't matter. If, the, if I have to take that much risk to take the trade, I don't trade it. I don't care how good it looks, and I don't care who tells me it's a good trade. It's not my trade. Because I've learned that discipline wins. If I'm disciplined to my trading and if I'm disciplined to my rules, it wins. And these are my basic rules and they're always here. And you can see trade stocks that are moving with the overall direction of the market. Trade stocks with concise and deliberate price action. If they're wild and whipping all over the place, gapping up, gapping down, I'm not interested. They don't have a high enough win-loss ratio. I don't want to trade them. I don't care what anybody says. Okay. And as I move through, we have stocks here, uh, or uh, I buy stocks at or near price support with a buy signal. I sell stocks at or near price resistance with a sell signal. And because of that, it stays on my desk every day. I know what I'm here to do. I focus in on what my job is to make money, to support my family, to do the things I want to do, to not trade to be busy. I risk money, and I'm willing to risk money. I'm willing to risk a lot of money on the right trade that I know is my trade. Okay. And I know now that it doesn't matter who thinks this is a great stock. It doesn't matter what's going on. If it's not my trade, it's not my trade. And I'm not worried about it anymore. Not interested in trading it. Okay. And then everybody has some personal rules. And this is that place where I said everybody's got different hangups with money. Um, and different things that you find just don't work for you. Um, one of the things I do, and people think it's weird, and it probably is, but it I know for a fact that when I trade biotechs, I can win in biotechs seven out of ten trades. Okay, Those three trades that lose take all the money back I ever made in those seven trades. I know that. Okay. And so I don't trade biotechs. It's it's not worth it for me. Um, my money is more valuable than just trading because I need to be busy. Okay. So let's take a look at, at this here and and let me show you what I mean by why it's important to understand what your win-loss ratio is and to pay attention to your win-loss ratio. So first off, um, in this example, I, I'm saying we have a goal that we want to make $1,000 a month. Now, I don't know, that may be too small. That may be way bigger than you can think right now. $1,000 a month, well, I've never come close to that. But we have to start someplace. So a thousand bucks a month, that's what I'm gonna shoot for. That's and and I'm gonna say, truthfully, honestly, average about twelve trades a month. Okay? Now you may average more or less. Plug those numbers in. Okay. What do you really do? Okay. And then I, the only thing I didn't put on here that I need to is how much Am I willing to risk to my stop loss on a trade? And see, we all have to know that number. We have to know that number. So uh, just for purposes of a small trading account, I, I actually figured all of this by a stop loss of $100. Now, I know that's really hard to do right now today because of the market being so volatile, particularly with options. But having a hundred dollar stop loss is pretty tough right now. 
But the purpose of this is just to show you the importance of the win-loss ratio. Okay. So, for example, if you come to me and you say, well, I'm a 50-50 trader, and this is you. Well, you know if you're a 50-50 win-loss trader, you need to plan for $600 in losses. Right? Got to plan for it. If, if you're trying to reach your goal, and that's what you truly are, you got to plan for $600 in losses. So that means to overcome that and make $1,000, you need to make $1,600 on those winning trades. Okay. Now, a lot of people will think, well, that's just a lot of people with small accounts. Because there's no way. I can't. There's no way. Well, if you divide $1,600 divided by those six trades, it means that you have to make $266 a trade. And you're going to make $1,000 a month. Okay. Now, why is this important? Well, first off, particularly in option traders, anybody see this number as impossible? That's just, there's no way you can make $266 on an option trade. <laughs> it's possible, right? It's a very doable number. Okay. But if you take a trade... If you buy a trade that's directly at price resistance, like I did over and over and over, you're not going to make $266. You're probably going to hit more losses. Okay? There's a lot of people who trade that when they finally make a winning trade, they don't give themselves even a chance. As soon as it starts moving up, they take the profit. They're not even overcoming their losses because they don't know this number that they really shouldn't be taking any trade unless it has the potential of making two hundred and sixty six dollars because if you're not following this plan you'll not make you won't make a thousand dollars a month if you follow this plan and you truly are a 50 50 win loss trader more often than not you'll make your thousand dollars a month or darn close to it Okay. But here's the importance of the win-loss ratio. If you improve just by one trade, one trade, you find one mistake in your trading and you stop doing it. Now it takes $214 per trade to make your goal. So we don't have to overcome the drawdowns. You improve by one more. You're, you stop chasing trades, racing after them after they've already stretched up, taking too much risk to your stop loss. You stop doing that, your win loss ratio goes up. Now you're here. Only requires 175 a trade to make your $1,000 a month goal. Okay? Forgive me, I'm from Nebraska, so people around here shoot signs all the time. So I've got all these bullet holes right in here. This is what we need to be shooting for. This is our target zone. But see, if we're constantly stuck in an area and we're not reviewing our trades, if we're not going back over our history and finding out what's working and what's not, how are we ever going to progress as a better trader? You guys ever think about that? You think something magically is just going to switch on and suddenly you're just making tons of money? It's not the way the market works. Everyone else in the market is trying to take your money. Know that and understand that. And the only way you're going to be on the other side of that equation where you're taking their money is that you have a better set of plans, a set of rules, a set of guidelines that you follow. Guidelines that put you in the, in the realm of making monthly, weekly goals. Does that make sense? We have to shake off what we think we know to be true. It has to be true because I want it to be true. And we've got to prove, is this actually true? 
we have to be willing to look at ourselves critically. You know, my kids will ask me and, and people will ask me, Doug, why don't you take more time off? You don't have to work that much anymore. You can take time off. And I always say, because my boss is a hard ass. He's, he sucks. Because I am harder on myself than I would ever be on anyone else to improve, to be better, to be more consistent in my trading. Because think about it, guys. We've all had that win-loss ratio where we've yo-yoed our account up and down. The market was really good over here, and we made good money. Man, it was great. And then we didn't recognize the change. And we kept doing all of the same things, kept the same habits, kept doing everything, and all of a sudden our account is back down here. And instead of fixing our problems, what do we do? We go out, well, unless I need a new scan, I need a new indicator, I need a new strategy, because this doesn't work. And you happen to catch a bull market and it runs back up again. And then you don't find out the problems in your trading and it goes right back down. This was a pattern that I was in for years because I wasn't willing to look at myself and say, what do I need to fix? Okay. So I want to encourage everyone because this is one of those, I guess, tough love conversations here, uh, the giant group coaching session. But <clears throat> I want to encourage everyone to this idea that you can improve, you can be better. It doesn't require, it doesn't require Rick to do it or me to do it. It requires you to do it. It requires you to take that responsibility for your trading and ask yourself those questions. Is this really my trade? How do I know? what? Why is it that I believe this even when I can't prove it with my trading? It's one of the reasons I threw out stochastics. I threw out MACD. I threw out all of that stuff because at the end of the day, I could not prove in any of my trading that that made one iota difference in my results. Maybe you can, and if you can, awesome, because that means you have found a little piece of your edge in the market. I use the 3A trap because the 3A trap provides me an edge. And that's the only reason I use the 3A trap, is I have an edge when I pay attention to that pattern. I've told you um, tonight that when we cross over up, that's not a reason for a trade. We cross up, we can completely reverse. No proof of support yet, we can come right back down. Nobody in here could buy this trade and stand a stop loss to there, nobody. If you think you can, you're lying to yourself. You'll micromanage that trade like crazy because the loss gets too big, right? When the stock crosses over and holds, the three holds right here. That trade wins 70% of the time. 70%. With a 70% win-loss ratio, I can make all kinds of money and I can be very patient waiting for that trade. I don't need to worry about this crossover or that crossover or this and that. That's the trade right there. Because if I trade with a high enough win-loss ratio, I build my confidence as well. I know what my trade is. So when that trade comes up, I can take it. I don't anguish over it. I know it's my trade. That's my trade. I take it. And over time, I can trade it just bigger and bigger and bigger and make as much money as you want to make. Because you know it's your trade. Okay. 
if the three fades below I don't care how big a bullish engulfing candle there is if the three faded below the eight the upside momentum has died it may return but well it will only be a buy signal until that occurs because too many times when we pop above and don't hold we fail and it doesn't matter what time frame either guys if you trade weekly doesn't matter if you trade longer term it's the same setup it doesn't matter if you trade an hourly it's the same setup it doesn't matter if you trade a five minute chart it's the same setup it's always the same setup because price is always trying to give us that clue where it wants to go and if we wait we can catch the trade if we chase the crossovers boom loss boom loss nope wait for the setup win Okay. Now you don't have to like the three inch trap. Okay. And, and to me, it has nothing to do. The three inch trap has nothing to do with finding a stock in the trap. Nothing to do with it. What it's showing me is the momentum of the move is staying strong enough that the three doesn't cross down through the eight and the buyers come in. If the momentum of this move is showing me that I have confidence getting into that trade to move to the upside if the momentum fades right here and we cross up and try to trade that trade well there you go there's another trade half of those will fail over and over again they will fail I don't want those trades I've got no interest in those trades it's not my trade so the more you focus in, and it doesn't matter, seriously guys, it doesn't matter what chart you look at. I've been talking up 3M here. You can see my alert. It's the same pattern. Okay, they're all the same patterns. I do two things in the market. I buy pullback opportunity patterns and I buy pop out of the box patterns. That's about all I do, but I work to be the best at those I can be because I know they have a win-loss ratio of better than or 70% or better. And that's all I need to know. That if I follow my rules and my guidelines and don't get caught up in all the minutia and all the stuff running around the market and all the hype and all the chasing and all of the emotion, and I do what I do best, I make money. And it doesn't matter what anyone else does because I know what my trade is. So if you don't know what your trade is, that's the process that you have to go through to discover that in your trading. You have to take what you're working with and you've got to work through it. I can tell you if, if you held a gun to my head and said, Campbell, from this day forward, you can never trade the three eight trap again. You will trade this strategy. I would go through this exact same process. I would find the things in that strategy that work the best, and then that's all I would do. Because nothing else matters. What I think about the market, my emotion of the market, what's happening in the world, all of that stuff, none of it matters if the trade isn't right. And that's what I do. Try to master something. Don't be a master of everything. Because no one can master everything. But you can master something simple like this. And you can see it every time. And there shouldn't be a question either. There really shouldn't be a question in your strategy that says, is this a trade or isn't it a trade? There shouldn't be a question. 
If you're working for a win-loss ratio, you'll know what works best and what doesn't. If you don't, if you're out there freewheeling, and you don't like the results that you're getting, if you like the results that you're getting, you don't have to listen to the thing I said tonight. But if you don't like the results you're getting and you want to improve that, you've has, you have to do the things to change. So any questions on that, guys? Um, thanks for listening. Um, I, I truly appreciate it. If um, No, the rules are exactly the same. So, um, you know, I trade... I trade a very fast um, futures chart. Okay, 333 tick futures chart. I use the three eight trap. The same rules. Okay, I make about a hundred thousand dollars every year just trading this once in a while because I know what my trade is and I know what's not my trade, and I just do the same thing over and over and over. The rules are the same. The patterns are the same. Price is price. It's one of the reasons why I say price is king. Because as long as you let price do the driving, you know what your trade pattern is and what the odds of that pattern is. You won't want to trade it. A what? Well, maybe this will work trade ever again. Okay, you just don't won't want to do it because, hey, it's so much easier to just do the thing that works. Okay, and please let me remind everyone that this I'm not trying to convince anyone that you have to trade the three a trap. I'm I'm not at all. There's there's a gazillion different ways to trade the market. Okay, find your niche. Find out where your odds are, where your edge is, and then just repeat it over and over and over. And that's all you'll have to do to be successful in the market. That's all you have to do. If you know where your edge is and you repeat it with discipline, make money. Warren Buffett once said that when he learned about, you know, value investing, that he could take money and use that money to, to, to make money and double it. He said he knew from a very early age he was going to be very rich. Because he just took what he knew and he repeats it over and over and over and over and over. He doesn't win every trade. He'll tell you that. I don't win all the time. But I know the odds that most of the time I will win, that I will make money. And he just does it over and over and over. Repeats the same thing over and over and over. So, awesome. I'm glad some of you got something out of this. Um, um, I'll, I can stick around for a question or two if you have that. Um, um, some I saw someone was posting uh, Boeing. I, I didn't, you know, jump on the question because I wasn't trying to be rude, but I was trying to stay on subject. Um, Boeing is potentially setting up, and I say potentially, three still holding above the eight. Everything's looking good there. Now we need a buy signal. People ask me, what's a buy signal? Look at the chart and ask yourself, where would I want it? Where does it prove that the buyers are stepping up? See, I can look at this chart right now and say, right here, that's where the sellers are. They have proven themselves. That's where the sellers are. So what has to happen here for this to be a buy signal? Now, this pattern, if it goes out here and continues to consolidate a little longer, that might change. We might tighten up the range. We might do all kinds of things in here. But the price action is telling me that's where it is.
That's where the sellers come in. We can see it. So what's a buy signal look like to you? Okay, so for example, today, this could have been a buy. Boom, you bought it and it pulled back. Where's your stop loss? It's always based on price action, guys. Never anything else. The price action tells you where the buyers show up. It shows you where the sellers show up. It shows you where the buyers show up. Your stop loss should always be below that. And then the question that always comes up with people, yeah, but I can't take that much risk. The answer is, then that's not your trade. Go find your trade. It really is that simple, guys. Go find your trade. Stop trying to make something. Tr stop trying to put a square, you know, peg through a round hole. It's, it's not going to work. You can find it all you want, but you're just going to end up frustrated. Lose money. I mean, haven't we proved enough, guys, when we look at our accounts, that predicting what's going to happen next isn't working? Haven't we proved enough that setting the stop loss where I want it to be isn't working? Market doesn't care what you think or what you want. We have to adapt to what the market is doing. What it's showing us. If we fight the market, we'll lose. Market's too big to lose. Tesla is not a trade, Dave. Not for me. You can see why. Well, first off, we're in a downtrend. The stock is in a downtrend. I have to trade it short. Okay. Crossover trade fails 50% of the time. This is not a trade for me. Might be a trade for you, not for me. What I'd actually be watching for is for the possibility of this failing here. I'd be watching this for short. Okay. The only way this can become a trade for a long side trade is I need that pattern to show up. We'll cross up and then hold the three holds above the eight and the buyer show themselves. That is what starts an uptrend. Until that occurs, there is no uptrend. Okay. There's no amount of crosses up that interests me in a trade. If the downtrend is the downtrend, those crossovers up mean nothing to me. Doesn't mean it can't go up from here. Let me make that clear. It can go up from here. That's fine. It'll do it without me because I'm not interested in it. Because that trade has an odds of 50 50. Uh, DKNG? Uh, maybe. Um, it's trying. I'll say that. Um, we've got a really messy, volatile chart in here, but it's trying. We've kind of slipped out of this downtrend here. We're trying to hold it. In here, if you can get your stop loss underneath here and handle, you know, these whips that are in here, your stop loss needs to be under there, then yeah, I could potentially buy that. I might want to look for a better trade. 
not saying that it's the best trade out there because you'll notice right there this is kind of a pennant pattern it's a wedge but it may have a shot if we look right across over here look at all that resistance it's possible this can go it's possible it fails if I can take the risk to the stop then it might be a trade for me yeah it would me too trader X it would it would be a concern for me and not just that but all of this over here be a little bit of a concern for me I don't like the fact that we're whipping back and forth quite so much in fact I, I would tell you if it's going to be bullish I'd almost rather to see this happen and I know people hate this when I say stuff like this but break out of here and then hold up here I'd rather once that happens I'll have a cleaner trade here in all likelihood Okay, um, Intel. Well, Carol, I, I, I mean, you know that's not my trade. Um, it may well play out. It's a double bottom. It, it, it may play out. Um, it's still in a downtrend. Um, The three hasn't come above the eight. Um, you know, I mean, it it didn't work here. It didn't work there. Okay, so it's not my trade. I'm not saying it won't work could work just it's not my trade FCX um, if you've been following my morning prep videos trader you know that I've been talking about FCX a okay. potential entry into this trade those there's the higher lows we're coming into that resistance right in there we're showing that bullishness three held above the eight you could have picked it up here or picked it up when it broke that resistance okay. and by the way guys if you miss this don't fret about it if don't chase a trade if you miss this guess what happens next this will rally and then it'll come back and it'll find a support in a trend someplace and you've got another chance to do it again as long as that big trend continues it's just going to continue to provide provide opportunities so just wait for the next one if you missed it you're in fcx long term yeah, I mean, you're looking great here. I would be expecting some kind of rest or pullback. We're testing, you know, all-time highs here. I would be expecting, you know, it, it may pop out and then rest. Um, this is pretty steep. If if this is our trend right here now, pretty steep right now. So expect it to go into a little bit of a consolidation or a protracted pullback. But I would have no problem holding that longer term, Dave. And, I, you know, particularly... I don't know where you bought it so you could be in a great profit right now to manage this trade and not worry about any rest or pull I like it if you're in it so guys can you see I can look at a chart and very very quickly say it's my trade or not trade I know what's my trade this right here beautiful chart um, if you're in this trade congrats it's beautiful um, 3A trap long occurred here. Is it a buy here? No, it's not a buy there. If you're in it, great. If you're waiting to get in it, 
You miss the trade. Wait for the next entry. Five to seven days in one direction, expect a reversal. Carvana. Um, Carvana was a pop out of the box, sort of a pop out of the box right here. It could be setting up another one right now, but we've got to wait for it. Trend is here. So if this is going to set up another pop out of the box now, it may have to rest out to there and then look for your entry. By the way, pop out of the box, high probability trades. And if you really pay attention to the consolidations, you can get lower risk entries than on pullback opportunity trades. Home Depot is a short. Okay, three cross through the eight. There's your resistance in the trade. We found sellers right at resistance. This is short. Three could not cross back above the eight. It's not yet. It's a setup short. Draw a trend line on Mo. No, I'm sorry, because I was looking at that Home Depot. Sorry, guys, I've been looking on a weekly. I didn't realize I was. Maybe you were talking about the daily, because daily would change. Yeah, daily, daily still not a trade on Home Depot. Still not a trade. And gap down, rolling back up. Uh, Mo, let's get, uh, this is how I have it currently drawn. There's your upside trend. Broke through this resistance. By the way, this was a 3A trap long right here. Carol, you know I've been talking about Mo setting up. There's the trade. Winning trade. One, two, three, four, five, six days up. Testing, breaking through resistance up here. I would expect a rest or pullback to occur at any time now. So I'm either taking profits, taking part of the trade off, or hedging this position for a potential pullback. Okay. Uh, Carvana, I'm sorry, on that Carvana, yeah, this is setting up as a pop out of the box. Now, you will want to notice here um, on this trade that this right now is the trend. Okay, this right here is probably an unsustainable trend. It doesn't mean it can't go up from there. They often will pop and go up a little bit from there but they usually don't last very long. Okay, take an example right here. Big pop, big gap up. Look how long this thing wandered around before it came back to trend. Okay, this is a pop out of the box. It's perfectly fine with me. You set an alert up here and wait for the trade. But it's a long ways away from trend or it's in such a steep trend, it may not last very long. Okay. Um, NVIDIA right now, in, in my opinion, NVIDIA is setting up with a buy signal. Um, look at all this time this is consolidated. We had this very, very strong upside move, but this has spent two and a half months going sideways. Some, some down there, but 
This right here is a bullish pattern. I, I, I can never tell you where a top of a chart is. But we go through these, these big stretches, look for these big resting patterns in the chart. Okay, and we have to, if we can maintain this momentum to the upside, every reason to believe it, this can make new highs. Okay, the, the new trend right now on the daily chart is right in here. It's dead solid perfect at the moment. Well, let me ask you, JC, are you trading a long-term chart or a daily chart? Long term, this may still have more consolidation that needs to happen. Just like we did out here. If you're following this as a trend, that buy signal is still there on the daily and it may go soon with this trend. Okay. But if you're following this trend, we should be expecting. This is going to take more time before it gets there. Even if it does pop, it can come back to this trend. Yeah, it may need to rest some more. You're, you know, I, if you're following that longer term trend, then certainly that's a possibility. But I would have to say that's a buy signal right here on the trend. It's also setting on support. So if we can get follow through in the market, there's no reason to believe that couldn't move on up and maybe test the highs in here. You can make money just going up there. Okay. I can't say it's going to break that. I can't I can't see the future, but that is a pop out of the box with a bullish engulfing candle on the trend and on support. If you're looking for a short-term swing, that may be a trade for you. Okay. There will be a time, JC, that this thing will wear out. They'll just be, everybody that's going to be in is in. It will wear out. And then it'll go through a protracted consolidation or pullback. Okay. But... As strong as it's been, I can't see it here. Um, certainly something could change tomorrow. Um, Delta Airlines, n no, not really. Um, I, I mean, if you count the pop out of the box right here. Okay, I can go with that. We've, if you're asking me right now if it's a pop out of the box, it's past the pop out of the box here, and it went a little bit early. But okay. And by the way, the pop out of the box rules that I trade by, guys, um, from the top of the box to the bottom of the box, I need that to be 3% or less. And so that would qualify in there. But this candle here popped the box already. So if, if that was the trade you're trading, you should be in the position right now. Stop loss under here until that can follow through to the upside. Garmin. Yeah, Garmin, maybe, but here again, massive stretch. Where's the trend? Do you think this trend can, can sustain? 
it may pop and go here, but be prepared for that not to be a very long term run. Okay. Longer term trend is out here. We are a long way from support. So this needs to, even if it does pop and go here, and it may, I wouldn't expect it to last long. Yes, it will be uploaded. When I get to it, that's the bigger question. Um, AMD, still in a downtrend. Um, we are trying right now, trying to hold a higher low, just like we tried over here. We're, we're trying. Um, the downtrend is still in play. Um, I'm not one, it doesn't mean you can't do it. Um, it may work. If you can catch that higher low in here for that pop out of the trend, you can catch that early entry. Um, but me personally, I would like to see that occur and pull back. And then I normally get higher odds on the trade. Let the institutions make the decision when this is going to reverse. They have all the money. They are the only ones that will make the decision whether they're going to support this stock or not. Okay. Let them make it. Make them. Make them make it. And then wait for the better entry when they've proved, yep, we're starting to support AMD again. Yeah, right here. Yep. Any other questions real quick? I went way longer than I was planning to go. Thanks for sticking around. Hope this was helpful everyone um, once again um, I know what my trade is and that may not be your trade but you need to find what your trade is you need to figure out um, what works for you and what doesn't work for you do more of what works and less of what doesn't Focus on your win-loss ratio. Focus in on that because we will not improve our win-loss ratio unless we focus on it. Unless we focus on what's working and what's not. Where, where are the odds? Where's my edge? Because once you find it, guys, once you determine what it is, hold on to it like crazy. That's why people can't convince me to do something else or trade something else or... It, it doesn't matter to me. It either is my trade or it's not. And I don't care. I will wait for my trade because I know if I'm patient and I wait for my trade, I'll make money. Okay. So just like the simple um, Rivian, 3A trap long, boom. Take the trade, made 32%. Close the trade. Okay, now usually they don't happen in one day. This just happened to go in one day. But there's the pattern. It's as clear, it's as easy to see. Anything you're gonna, I mean, it's so easy. And all I do is the same thing. PSTG. Nice stretch up here today if you're in it. Um, yeah, uh, very good. It's pushing into that resistance here in the chart. It's closer to resistance and support, Mara. 
So if you're not already in it, probably wouldn't be a trade I could plan that would be okay with me. You know, it's a big popping candle and I, I you know, and I get that. Yeah, if you're in it, then I would continue to hold it. Uh, Baba. First off, I don't trade Baba. So, I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't try, and unless it's a mistake, I don't trade any Chinese issue stocks. It's one of my personal rules. Started a few years back. I don't trade any Chinese issue stocks. They're an enemy to our country. I don't trade them. I don't. I, I just won't trade them. Period. Um, uh, because of that will not trade it. Now that being said, you understand that. Okay. If this can push back above three holds above the eight, maybe. Awful volatile here. They reported 86% decline in earnings. Okay. So I got no, I honestly, um, I, I'll show Baba to people in the room if they're interested in it when it's popping or setting up, but I'll never trade it. That's a personal thing for me and just won't do it. But there's no signal here to buy. If you're asking for any signal for an entry, there's no long, there's no short here. It's an earnings event, wait for the pattern to set up. And you know, guys, there's so many good patterns that set up. You don't, I mean, um, wait for a pattern to set up. Wait for the pattern to set up. You, you don't have to, you don't have to guess. You don't have to predict anything. Wait for the pattern set up. Um, wait for it. 3M is something you guys, if you've been watching the morning prep videos, I've been talking about. Wait for the pattern to set up. Make money. Anything in here? No trade. That's all junk. Wasting your time. There's the trade. Okay. Yeah, um, well, you can see it's here on my chart. It's important to me, um, probably more for the amplitude of a move. So for example, when a stock is stretched away, way away from the, I call it the trendinator, from the trendinator, it's, um, it, there's no trade here. It, I'm looking for a pullback. It's moved too far too fast, expect a pullback. Like that chart that we looked at before over here, somebody had pointed out that really zoomed up um, right here. Okay, we're way far away from the trendinator. I'm not interested in it. I'm expecting more of a consolidation or a rest. Okay. So those kind of trades that just zoom, like Carvana here on the earnings report. Look at the, and just go back and look at the past. Zoom, it came back here, three held above the eight and we came in to the 17 and then the trade happened. You know, there's so much data in the chart if you look back, guys. You can see the same kind of patterns. I go, oh, wait a minute. It's doing the same thing here. This may have to rest a little bit more. You 
you just look at the chart. Wait for the good quality patterns, take the trade. Last one, unless there's other question than just looking at stocks. Uh, G's broken trend. Uh, broke trend, threes crossed below the eight. There is no long trade here, and so far there is no short. No trade. I would. I'm not saying you have to, but I would. What I would be watching this for now that the threes cross below the eight, whoops, I would be looking for that resting pattern, consolidation, or continued pullback in here that sets up the trap short. Okay. That's what I'd be looking for. Um, and until that shows up, or it crosses back up and holds. Okay. Take, for example, right in here, three cross through the eight, cross down. It became a new trade when we three crossed up and held. There's the winning trade. And, and by the way, guys, it's always the same. It's always the same. And that's the thing that's so, you know, we fight this stuff so much. But the price patterns that the chart displays over and over and over, it's always the same. If we try to predict this is going to cross back up, it can pop up here, hit that resistance, and fail. It can continue to con go down here, then rally back and fail. It could go sideways here for a while and then fail. Because if we can't get the three exponential moving average over the eight, there's no momentum to go up. Does that make sense, guys? Look over here in the past. We can have all kinds of these. Cross out, fail, cross out, fail, cross out, fail, cross out, fail. Where does the trade show that we're gonna hold that something has changed? Right here. And you follow that and you make money. Trade less often. Make more money by being pickier about the entry into a trade. Okay, I talked too long, so I'll answer all state. Um, all state's uncertain. Very volatile right in here. It may be trying to calm down that volatility in the trade. Um, I would put current trend right through here. Okay, so it's trying to decide. Right now we crossed up, the three's trying to hold, but I'm gonna need to see some kind of buy signal show up over here over the next two or three days to prove that that's gonna hold or that three will cross back down through the eight. Because if you look at this chart and go from here, whoops, stupid thing. Go from here to here, that's potentially a lower high. Until we prove to hold and those buyers step in. Okay. So it's trying to figure itself out.
we're waiting to see if the institutions are really going to step up here or not. By the way, all of these false signals like this, guys, if you think about what the institutions are trying to do with these false signals, oftentimes you see these false signals like this. It may be every time they pop this up, they're selling to the retail traders that are willing to chase. Think about it. That's what they love to do. To unload positions, they sell to the retail traders that's willing to buy it on the chase up. Um, Dave, I do once in a while in the trading room, but not often. And the reason is, is because when you trade futures, it's so fast on the time frame that I trade. Um, I, it's easy to make some mistakes when I'm trying to answer questions and explain things on it. Um, so usually when I'm in a live trade, um, it's when I can focus on what I'm doing because there's a lot of risk in futures. Okay. But yeah, once in a while. I do a lot of pre-market, after-market, and if I don't have coaching midday, that's when I will trade futures. Well, thanks everyone. Um, I really appreciate it. We extended this out a lot longer than I intended to. Um, hopefully, like I said, hopefully this worked for you. No, I trade the E-minis, Dave, E-mini futures. I've never ever traded the micro minis. And probably for the last 15 years, the only, the only futures chart I've ever traded in the, about the last 15 years is the Dow Jones. I don't trade any other futures market, period. The faster you go, the fewer symbols you should be looking at. Um, so you can be more fat, more focused on that that symbol. So I trade one chart. I trade the Dow E Mini futures. That's all I trade, ever. I did, I never look at another chart. Just this one. That's all I trade. I don't look at oil. I don't look at none of it. I trade this chart. This chart only. Same pattern. So the patterns don't change, guys. Patterns are the same. So guys, have a great evening. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bio. You guys take care. Have a great afternoon. I want to wish you all the very, very best. Uh, be careful. Be safe. See you all um, RWO folks bright and early in RWO. If you're not a member of Hit and Run Candlesticks or Right Way Options, please consider taking a look at it. If you picked up something here today, that can be helpful. Well, we can reinforce that day after day in the trading room. Um, and I love helping people with their trading. So um, come on over and take a shot. You can get a trial service for less than pizza and a Coke. Give it a shot, see if it's for you. Not saying it will be. You gotta find out if it's gonna be for you. But if it's for you, if I can help you, I'd love to have you there. Y'all take care, be safe guys, and we'll see you see you in the market tomorrow. Wish y'all the best.